Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient with shortness of breath, weakness, and some edema of the body. So here's an overview of the lung windows. Now we've gone through a fair amount of the anatomy of the mediastinum, and I'd like to get you a little bit more of a feeling for the dynamics of what happens when things go awry with the heart, for example, or with blood vessels. So here we have the mediastinum, here you see very clearly the structures of the heart, left ventricle, left atrium. Remember, they are more leftward, but also more posterior. Here is the right ventricle, right atrium. You don't really see a real clear definition between the two, but the valve between the atrium and ventricle on both the right and left is really quite a very thin structure. This is the interventricular septum. So here's the heart. First of all, it's big. Now we go up to the superior mediastinum. We see ascending aorta, descending aorta, main pulmonary artery with left and right main pulmonary arteries. Okay. Let's look through the lungs. Let's see, what do we see? The lungs are Pretty clear, I don't see any real consolidations. No pleural fluid. These vessels maybe look a little bit bigger than I would like them to. Let's see how that looks on coronals. That'll give you sometimes a better idea of what the upper lobe vessels look like. You can see them more longitudinally. And indeed, they look pretty big. If we saw those on a chest radiograph, we would call that pulmonary vascular redistribution, which means that in an upright patient, at least, we expect the lower lobe vessels to be more prominent because they are bearing more of the actual weight, more of the actual pressure related to the blood in the vascular system of the lungs. But here you can see that there's pretty good prominence in the upper lobe vessels on both sides. And that's because once the lower lobe vessels are fully distended, the upper lobe vessels start getting more distended too, if there's a backup of pressure. Why would there be a backup of pressure? Heart failure. In other words, the ability of the heart to contract and expel its content out into the pulmonary artery and or the aorta means that there will be a back pressure to the left atrium and or the right atrium. And therefore, from the right atrium or left atrium, you get back pressure into the vessels draining into the right atrium or left atrium. So, in the case of the left atrium, of course, the left atrium is receiving oxygenated blood from the lungs before it goes into the left ventricle. So this large area here is the left atrium and into that we can see draining pulmonary veins from both lungs, usually two prominent ones on each side, into the left atrium and then from there into the left ventricle. Obviously the heart overall is large and then we also have the right atrium. What drains into that? Superior vena cava and inferior vena cava come from above and below respectively into the right atrium and that deoxygenated blood goes from the right atrium into the right ventricle and then to the pulmonary arteries to be oxygenated again in the lungs. What has gone awry here? Well, maybe, maybe something has caught your eye here. Look at that liver. That does not look right. What's wrong with it? Let's take a look. There's a lot more enhancement than you'd expect. You have all these little splotchy areas, round structures here and there throughout the whole liver. But the dominant finding is that you have this very prominent vein here. This is a vein in the liver, so is this. And they converge superiorly on the inferior vena cava. Let's go back down again. Here's the inferior vena cava, prominent vessel, prominent vessel, 
and probably one over here too, not as well seen. Anyway, we'll focus on these two. And you see that they converge on the inferior vena cava just before that gets to the right atrium. This is because there's back pressure in the right atrium. These vessels, these hepatic veins, of which there are usually three prominent ones, but it looks like the two on this side have kind of converged prior to joining the inferior vena cava. Oh, actually, here we go. This is one, two, three. So these are the three main hepatic veins, and they are converging onto the inferior vena cava. But not only are they prominent and distended, but the vessels draining into them are distended to such an extent that you have this patchy, diffuse appearance of enhancement throughout most of the liver. Extremely uncommon to see something like this. What it means is there's an abnormal back pressure in the inferior vena cava. And that is occurring because the right heart does not have the strength to expel its content to push the blood from the right side of the heart, right atrium and right ventricle, through the lungs quickly enough, effectively enough, to, pre to prevent this back pressure. So that's what causes this. So this is right heart failure. Now, the prominence that we see in the upper lobe vessels is something different because remember the upper lobe vessels are both pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins but it is the veins which become abnormally distended and those veins are what are going to be draining into the left atrium in other words the prominent pulmonary veins in the lungs or pulmonary veins in general but these prominent ones are emptying with their oxygenated blood into the left atrium so that can go to the left ventricle and out the aorta with its nice freshly oxygenated blood. But in this case that is also experiencing back pressure. The vessels wanting to drain into the left atrium, pulmonary veins that is, are distended because of left heart failure. So this is heart failure including left and right heart failure revealing some distension of the pulmonary veins in the lungs bilaterally. That's abnormally prominent. Some distension, but most markedly, this severe congestion, venous congestion in the liver because the back pressure from the right atrium, which is where this wants to be draining, is so high that the liver cannot drain its hepatic veins into the left atrium. And there also would be considerable back pressure then likely in the inferior vena cava. So the patient may well have distended vessels in the abdomen lower and may have edema, pitting edema particularly in the lower extremities. We don't really see too much here to tell us uh, how bad the distension of the IVC is. But an unusually pronounced case of severe venous congestion in the liver related to heart failure. First and foremost, in this case, right heart failure because of back pressure from the right atrium and right ventricle 